This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at electron configurations and the Aufbau principle. So as we look at each electron configuration, we're going to fill the atomic orbitals with electrons. As a reminder, an atomic orbital can only hold two electrons and they must have opposite spins. And we use single headed arrows to represent electrons. So starting with the element with atomic number one, which is hydrogen. Its electron configuration is 1s1. So as you can see, we put one electron in the 1s sub level. Moving on to helium, which has the electron configuration 1s2. So we now put a second electron in the 1s sub level. When doing this, we have one arrow pointing up and one arrow pointing down. This represents the opposite spins of the electrons. Moving on to lithium, we now use the condensed electron configuration. So for lithium, it's He2s1, and we put one electron in the 2s sublevel. Next is beryllium, which is He2s2, and we put a second electron in the 2s sublevel. Next is boron, which is He2s2, 2p1, and we put one electron in the 2p sublevel. Moving on to carbon, which is He2s2, 2p2. Note that when we add the second electron to the 2p sublevel, it goes into the next available empty orbital. Moving on to nitrogen, which is He2s2, 2p3. So once again, you can see we put the third electron in the next available empty orbital. Next is oxygen, which is He2s2, 2p4. So once each orbital in the 2p sublevel is occupied by one electron, we then go back and add a second electron to each orbital. Moving on to fluorine, which is He2s2, 2p5. And then we come to the end of period two, which is the noble gas neon. This has the condensed electron configuration He2s2, 2p6. And now we see that we have completed the 2p sublevel. So next we move on to the period three elements, starting with sodium, atomic number 11. Note that we are now using the symbol for neon, which represents the core electrons 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So we start with sodium, which has the electron configuration Ne, 3s1. And we put one electron in the 3s sublevel. Next, we have magnesium, which is Ne, 3s2. And we have the second electron also in the 3s sublevel. Moving on to aluminium, which has the electron configuration Ne, 3s2, 3p1, and we put one electron in the 3p sublevel. Next is silicon, which is Ne, 3s2, 3p2. So once again, we have degenerate orbitals, so the second electron goes in the next available empty orbital. Moving on to phosphorus, which is Ne, 3s2, 3p3, and the third electron occupies the next available empty orbital. Moving on to sulfur, which is Ne, 3s2, 3p4. And as you can see, we now start to pair up the single electrons. Moving on to chlorine, which is Ne, 3s2, 3p5. And finally, at the end of period three, we have the noble gas argon, which has the electron configuration Ne, 3s2, 3p6. And we have now completed the 3p sublevel. Next, we have the first seven elements in period four, starting with potassium. Note, we are now using the symbol for argon to represent the core electrons. So for potassium, we have AR4S1, and we put one electron in the 4S sublevel. Next, we have calcium, which is AR4S2, and we put the second electron in the 4S sublevel. From scandium to zinc, we are now filling the 3D sublevel. So the electron configuration for scandium is AR4S2 3D1. So we add one electron to the 3D sublevel. Next is titanium, which is AR4S2 3D2. So as we saw previously, when we have degenerate orbitals, we need to fill each orbital singly before putting in a second electron. So the second electron goes into the next empty available orbital. The next element is vanadium, which is AR4S2, 3D3. So the third electron goes into the next available empty orbital. When we get to chromium, we have our first exception to the Aufbau principle. 
If we look at the electron configuration, we can see that it's AR 4S1 3D5. So chromium does not fill according to the Aufbau principle. Instead, we have one electron in the 4S sublevel and five electrons in the 3D sublevel. And next we have manganese, which is AR 4S2 3D5. So for manganese, we have two electrons in the 4S sublevel and five electrons in the 3D sublevel. So next we look at the electron configurations of the remaining five D block elements. Starting with iron, which is AR 4S2 3D6. Next is cobalt, which is AR 4S2 3D7. Moving on to nickel, which is AR 4S2 3D8. And here we have our second exception to the Aufbau principle. The electron configuration of copper is AR 4S1 3D10. So we have one electron in the 4S sublevel and 10 electrons in the 3D sublevel. And to end the D block, we have zinc, which is AR 4S2 3D10. So as we can see, we have now completed the 3D sublevel. So finally, we're going to complete the electron configurations of the elements gallium to krypton. Starting with gallium, which is AR 4S2 3D10 4P1. So we put one electron in the 4P sublevel. Next is germanium, which is AR 4S2 3D10 4P2. So once again, with degenerate orbitals, we put one electron in each orbital first. Next, we have arsenic, which is AR 4S2 3D10 4P3. Moving on to selenium, which is AR 4S2 3D10 4P4. Next, we have bromine, which is AR 4S2 3D10 4P5. And to finish up period 4 and the 4P sublevel, we have the noble gas krypton. The electron configuration is AR 4S2 3D10 4P6. And that covers the first 36 elements of the periodic table. Atomic number 1, which is hydrogen, to atomic number 36, which is krypton.